everybody. So today is the week that I've been waiting for for two years. I thought this moment would come way earlier. I was thinking this moment was going to happen 18 months earlier. And that's because I try to analyze the world through sense-making lenses and common sense especially. And we've had two years of macro nonsense. And this week is the week where we get out of this nonsense and we finally get the monetary policy towards zero again, which is the only way it can be because there is too much debt in the system. No investment advice, just an opinion, etc. But to me, that is the only way it can be. The zero rate environment will come back. It may take a year and a half to two years, but they will be dropping the rates. And that is why disruptive assets, growth stocks, Bitcoin, the assets I cover on this channel, in my view, will be doing very, very well. This screenshot right here is actually from NPR, right? More of a pro-government publication talking about the Fed mistake. This is the, the, the press conference, the famous press conference. We're not even thinking about thinking about raising rates. And you can look at that press conference and, you know, this is the sad part. This is what upsets me because that press confer conference took place about a year before he started raising the rates. And back then, when that press conference was done, the, the, the sentiment, the signs in the market were, we're going to be in that ZERP environment, we're going to be in that zero interest rate environment until 25, 26. And then and only then, maybe we'll try raising the rate ba rates back a tad, like we did in 2015, 2017, 2018. Nobody anticipated this um, purposeful, you know, slaughter of the economy. This purposeful slaughter of the economy was not really anticipated by anybody. And that's why we've, we've, had, we've had companies that have gone bust that should not have gone bust, in my view. A lot of them. We have startups that could not get financed. I made a video about the space uh, uh, companies a, a few days ago talking about how a lot of these companies probably would still be around if the interest rates were not the way they are. That's just my opinion. Of course, it's nothing more. Two years. Two years of macro nonsense is what we had. And it's a bluff that did not work. And when you look at the hike, this is the rate, I, rate hikes. This is from FactSet. When you look at what we had, it was flat, 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 which is what I call the zero rate environment, roughly essentially zero. Like, you know, they dropped it and they tried raising it back up just a little bit for good measure. We essentially, since the 08 crisis, we essentially had zero interest rates. The economy was doing well. It was not doing well because the money was cheap. It was doing well because of a predictability of the money supply, which is also a big point that I aim to make. My problem is not rate. Right. Like, you see, if the rates were to back at 2% and if they just stayed flat at 2%, I would be perfectly happy with it. The problem is when you have a committee who single-handedly decides whether money should be expensive or money should be cheap and thus decides which businesses are viable, which businesses are not viable. This should not be, in my view, again, this should not be decided by a geriatric committee. It should not be a geriatric committee that decides the cost of money. The cost of money should be decided by the market and it should be very stable over very long periods of time. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm showing kind of my, 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 my views on the matter. And, you know, of, of course, I'm more of an, on the Austrian economic side. So that's why I think like that. But I also think that's how engineers thinks, think. And I, I also think that's what makes sense. We need the, the cost of money needs to be natural. And if it's not natural, if we're going to change the cost of money, it should at least be democracy that changes the cost of money. And this is what is so bad about, about this system. And this is why the market, how many days, how many, how many crashes, total systematic crashes of the market have we had just because the market is freaking out as to how the head of the Fed is going to feel that day, how they're going to interpret the data that day anyways. Right now, they're putting a 50% rate cut 
They were predicting 25% just a few days ago. They said, oh, we're going to do a 25% rate cut. Now the CME tool is saying a 50% rate cut. You know, um, it's surprising that the market is down following this. If anything, the market should see it as a good news, but that market is thinking, oh, that means there's a recession. That means it's bad out there. And so it's selling up the stock over the short term, in my view, the market makes no sense. Anyways, all of this, all of this world of hurt that the economy has been in for the past two years, you may think, well, at least it was worth it, right? Did we did we overcome the money printing that happened to during COVID? Did we overcome that? No, wait a minute. No, it did nothing. The two years of rate cuts, it flattened, it flattened the expansion curve. We've had flat money supply, but did we go back to the pre-printing level? Did we go back to that trajectory? No, and it's steepening back up. And so now, and this is why this channel is named Bid Be The Denominator, by the way, now we're gonna have a steeper curve. Like this is gonna go like this. You know, the, the curve is, we're gonna go back to that curve of money supply growing, but instead of growing at seven and eight percent, like in the, in the 06, 08, instead of growing faster than that, right, more than 10 percent between 10 to 10, 20, 20, it's gonna grow at 15 percent in my view. That's, that's, that's what I see coming. So what, what did we have here? It was all a bluff. It was all a bluff. They tried to stun the economy. And in the meantime, the, the, the market still ended up in the world of hurt, right? The, so many companies lost value where it was not warranted. So many companies were not able to get financing where it was not warranted. And even waves of layoffs, how many waves of layoffs have we had that were directly linked to the cost of money? Anyways, this is, this was, this is, I'm very happy. I'm celebrating. It doesn't sound like I'm celebrating, but I'm celebrating that the rate cuts are coming. The zero interest rate rate environment is coming back because that's the only way forward. There's too much debt in the system, right? Do, 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 do you want the, 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 the banks to start, you know, marking to market their bonds? Right? Do you, do, do we want that? What's, what happened to the value of the bonds in, insurance companies, the value of the bonds in banking, what happened to all of these bonds? You know, if you have a mortgage at a 2.8 or 3%, someone's holding that mortgage and someone's having a major loss in that mortgage. If we keep the rates this high, the loss is going to have to be taken, right? So that's why we have to drop the rates. Also the government, right? The financing of the government. There's too much debt in the system, and also deflation, which is the other risk. Deflation could make the house of cards crumble because when you have deflation, prices go down, of course. And when prices go down, what is it that happens? Well, if prices go down, there's less local taxes, less sales taxes, less income tax, less state tax, less of everything, less jobs. Deflation means less of everything, less of everything because... The, the top line, the revenue for these companies is decreasing in a deflation environment. And I happen to believe that technology is deflationary in the first place. And since the system needs to be inflationary, in the face of technology-driven deflation that we're entering right now, think about how much money printing is gonna be is gonna need to be injected into the economy to keep the inflation rate at one or two percent, right? How do you keep the inflation when at one? Or, how do you keep the inflation rate at one or two percent when technology is making the cost of living cheaper and cheaper year after year, right? There's innovations I cover a lot on this channel. I talk about solar energy. I talk about electric cars. These are hugely deflationary events and and deflate they are deflationary to very important spending areas for people so so much printing is going to need to occur especially to create jobs that are destroyed by technology i am supremely confident of this is just for me no investment advice of course so anyways let me get, get i don't have much actionable in this video over when you know most most of my viewers know that the rate cuts are coming you know they're coming um but just just to tell you about the debate here 
All right. So right now, the, the CME tool is saying it's going to be a 50 basis point. Three days ago, it was 25 basis points. So traders are betting. They don't know where it's headed. Folks, if you if we if we if we get a 0 0.25 cut, some people will will say, oh, it's not enough, and they'll be unhappy. And if we get a 50 basis point cut, others will say, oh, it's too much. The economy is in trouble, and they'll be unhappy. So this is kind of a setup where you can't win where whatever decision is made, there will be a lot of people that are unhappy. And that's why I actually align with a lot of Bitcoin Twitter, if you follow that, who's who's calling the Fed to break up, to break with the tradition of the 25 and the 50, you know, to break with all of these bets that were placed on each cut and just go right in the middle and do a, 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 a 0 0.35 cut. That's what a lot of the market is 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 suggesting, and so so I I argue that would be pretty clever if if we if if they did that, that would not spook the market in one way or another. Unfortunately, the people at the Fed are very traditional, so I highly doubt they'll do that. They'll do one or the other. They are very traditional. They won't they won't go halfway, and so fr Wednesday will be volatile. I don't expect anything to happen on Wednesday before 1 p.m. I, ju I just don't. It's going to be, most of the trading on Wednesday is going to be towards the end of the day. I have no idea where the market is headed. It doesn't matter to me because I do long-term stuff. This is more of a celebration style video. Happy the rate cuts are finally here. They're finally happening. Also, be careful on Friday. So, you may know that the third Friday of the month is typically when options expire. It's called expiration Friday, and you get a lot of volatility. And so, you know, it, it may be useful to do some buys on some companies that you've been eyeing, wait for the volatile, the very volatile Friday. And by volatile, I mean volatility often means to the downside, right? Is often what we mean. So always be careful with a Friday. And you see, I'm showing you this. This is just a random options a contract I took randomly for next year, right? One year out, the options. You see, if you were to take Tesla options today, they would expire on Friday, September 19, 2025. Option, options expire, monthly options expire the third Friday of the month. And that's why we get volatility every time in both Fridays. So if you if you get a calendar, if you get a, in, the, uh, in the habit of buying stocks frequently, that's something that you'll, you'll, um, you'll end up intuitively knowing about. But that's, that's how it works. So anyways, this video was just a celebratory video. The rate cuts are finally here. I'm celebrating. I'm happy. I think they're two years too late is what I think. Anyways, this was not investment advice, no financial advice, no Fed advice, no advice, no, 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 no judgment whatsoever. This is only entertainment. I'm only running this channel as entertainment. And hopefully you found this video to be joyous and enjoyable. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.